How are you doing, Alex? I'm good. Can you hear me Yeah, okay? hi. Yes, hi, this is Jurgen from the 69 Eyes. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and get started. How's it going? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's uh, exciting times once again. And uh, we just released a new single yesterday. Uh, there's a brand new 69 Eyes single out called Fade to Grey. It came out yesterday and I'm here in Hollywood, California to promote it. And then I'm flying to East Coast and we will start a tour on March uh, 25th or 26th. Uh, excuse me, 20, 26 to be precise uh, on Tuesday. And we'll be touring on uh, sort of like a East Coast side of the States, at, at least for us Europeans, we think so, uh, that it's on the East Coast of the US uh, for three weeks. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. I know um, the single just came out yesterday and I've been seeing a lot of positive things about it. How are you feeling about the release of Fade to Grey? Uh, you know, like... Uh, like she's doing this like a uh, little lifetime already. So uh, uh, releasing only one song and doing all this media for it, uh, it feels like we released an album. So, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, and, and we got all this attention and, and media for it. And, and so that's obviously wonderful. Uh, and, and, you know, in, in a way, because just like, uh, just to make sure that people are aware that we are releasing new music. And, but, but the most important is like we have seen, and I have seen uh, also like the fan response and seems like people are really loving the song. And I, I never read anything like that from our, any music that we have released by far. I mean, it's sort of like, a, I, I, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, people are using such words that, you know, I haven't seen in any fan feedback Mm -hmm. ever so it's like it, it's a it's a power ballad uh and uh, it's a very different song that we're ever done and uh, it's obvious obviously being a rock and roll band you should do a christmas song we've done that <laughs> and then you have to do a power ballad as well as well as like anthem and then you need a hangover song and all the all that stuff so now there's right. a time for a power ballad and, and so uh, or breakup song even so it's there and people are using, like I said, words that I have not seen them use uh, ever uh, of our music. So I think we have done something right. But on the other hand, we mm -hmm. are also doing this music for ourselves. So and, and we were pleased and thrilled and honored to have a chance to do music uh, of Diane Warren. And so, you know, like uh, that's that's one of the highlights of 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 my entire musical career so that's enough but it's nice that people also uh love it but i mean why why shouldn't they it's a, it's a diane warren song come on that that she has <laughs> changed the world he she made the world how it is like uh in in many ways in our eyes you know For because sure. of her music Oh, yeah. And me, I'm a little biased, but I think the 69 Eyes has the best Christmas song I've ever heard ever. So for anyone who hasn't listened to it, <laughs> definitely check it out. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. And if you are alone, don't go to New York because it's a pretty lonely place, I could imagine, <laughs> according to the 69 Eyes Christmas song. Exactly. So the song Fade to Grey, do you feel like it kind of it fits into the 69 Eyes sound or do you think it's like something new and different or how do you feel about that? Uh, well, we arranged that. So, uh, like it, it, it definitely, and because of my voice, it sounds like us, but also like, uh, doing, uh, that kind of power ballad, we were nat naturally want to aim somewhere else that we've never been before. So I, hopefully it, it, it ends up to some radio stations or we, uh, we will get some airplay that we wouldn't get like with, uh, our usual stuff that we do so uh, and it's a, such a high quality so you know like uh, mm -hmm. how would I say it it's it's like it's like um, there are certain dreams when you are an artist and when you are in a rock and roll band there's also certain dreams one one of the dreams could be even like even though no matter where you come from and if you are aware of rock and roll history you would probably would dream to play at the whiskey a go-go in Hollywood 
we've done that like 20 years ago. So, you know, like there are certain dreams left. So one of the dreams could be like uh, uh, have a chance to um, record music written by such a uh, legend like Diane Warren. And now we're done that, you know. So mm -hmm. it's it's really uh, – and also like uh, naturally – uh, like let's say our fan base or or usual music consumers they don't that much most likely are they don't care about who's who has written the song or history of music in general in that sense but you know it's it, it's it's for us it's something that we 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 accomplished and and we ha had a chance to do so it's it's mm -hmm. at least it's important for me i feel like super happy about it but also like we are like it's it's one day old the song is one day old right now so uh and i haven't blow the candle for it yet like maybe i should like you know when it's let's see what happens like maybe after a couple of i think because it's a slow it's a ballad so i think it's kind of slow builder i mean it's like uh i expect it to uh change some things or bring something new but not not immediately you know mm -hmm. So what are the other dreams of the 69 Eyes? Because you mentioned one was playing at Whiskey A Go Go, which you guys have done already, and then doing this song as well. Uh, well, so I, I would love to do something uh, like uh, kind of roots music with the 69 Eyes, like uh, maybe uh, touch, doing something kind of uh, Johnny Cash way, acoustic way of our music at some mm -hmm. point you know we're we're in the point that we have we we have the the set list which has songs which are like like a couple of decades old that people come to listen to us so so we're sort of a legacy band that's like an industrial mm -hmm. term in a music industry term for 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 us so you know we have our songs and so maybe i, I would love to uh, explore with our music that we've written and, and people know, explore a little bit through those songs and, you know, like uh, how would they sound if we make it more rootsy and something like that. So that's that's something that I'm, I'm interested in. Yeah, for sure. And I guess since the, call, the song is called Fade to Grey and you guys have done a song called Grey on a previous album, did you think about that when you came up with the title of the song or that maybe it connects a little bit with that other song? Uh, no, it, it's it's entirely Diane Warren uh, lyrics as well. She's written the whole song. But that the magic of Diane Warren is this what I... What I uh, you know, le learned also like uh, whenever she writes a song for an artist, uh, you can Google that, that up. It's just like a stories that these artists have been like, oh, wow, how could you know that this is going, ex this exactly is going on in my life? And, you know, yeah. like uh, <laughs> they, 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 the so the, whatever song has been resonating all the other artists, whether it's uh, John Legend or Celine Dion or, the other other people recording her songs like have been you know sort of like close what's they've been through at the moment so when i got this fate to gray song from her that was also like kind of uh, surprising because i could totally relate on that song because i just like uh, had the vibe that everything was just turning to you know gray uh, mm -hmm. or like sort of like the colors were disappearing it was a, i was living in such kind of wipes wipes those days when i got the song like uh, a year ago so you know so uh i was wondering like how how did you know and and it's really really and i read the, the other stories that it's always like that when uh she's such a magical mastermind so mm -hmm. you know, like uh, there's pure, pure magic in, uh, and somehow she she always knows. So I could really relate. Like, hold on, why are you writing <laughs> about my life? Who who told you this? So yeah. you know, it's it's interesting, but it's it's a it's also very artistic, and uh, it's a amazing amazing thing to have a chance to experience this on on every level, really. Yeah, it's so cool to hear you. I mean, I can hear it in your voice that you're really excited about this. Like, this is something new, something fresh. Like, you're excited about it, and yeah, and I, I we kept this we kept this as a secret, like a like a year. I I met her wow. 
by by accident two years ago in Beverly Hills, and uh, then then I um, it took me a year to properly get in touch with her. Uh, and uh, then then asking about like if there could be a possibility of uh, like making some musical collaboration and then exactly a year ago she sent the fake to create demo for us and so we've been just like super secretive about it and and it took nearly a year to record the song for us like not that we were on studio every day but we were really careful doing it in many many different sessions and because it also has like a a big orchestration classical orchestra there in the song so it, it's a, it's kind of massive so as i said earlier it's interesting that i've been doing all these interviews from only one song and it feels yeah. like it, we released an album but it's actually like sort of like we we really approached to record the song like an album it took that long right I did have a few questions about the album Death of Darkness. The yes, song please. itself is the, you know, the title of the album. What what about that song like brought the vampires back to the classic sound of the 69 Eyes cuz that's something I see a lot in the comments like this sounds like old 69 Eyes. This is classic. It's amazing cuz it's just one of I think one of the best songs on the album personally. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was the aim. That was like sort of aim, and it's it's kind of like uh, uh, if you if you listen to our records, like even from like uh, two thousand two thousand one, uh, they don't sound like contemporary music from those days. I think we managed already then to capture a certain kind of like timeless sound. And also the music, musically and and lyric wise and so on. So this was just like a pretty simple for us to do. But we always forget uh, like this approach because like when we are creating something new, because we are just exciting of creating something new and explore something new. But I, we also obviously understand that it's uh, we have a certain sound that people are most likely expecting to so i think with the new album death of darkness is like uh the title track is is definitely something like a classical sounding 69 eyes on the other hand we released earlier from that album a couple of singles which were just like fast rocking songs in the vein of lost boys or we have a song called never say die but that's the other side of the 69 eyes it's either like kind of glammy hard rock rocking stuff or then it's like this kind of like a little bit more mellow melancholic uh melodic uh dark rock right well in the song death of darkness you mentioned in an interview that it's about love and that love leads us to light was there like an inspiration behind those lyrics oh yeah well actually <laughs> you're just you're fucking clever with these questions i think uh yeah, you know, and then came Fate to Grey. Mm-hmm. So go figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but- yeah, you can you can read read our songs like my like open book. Thanks for that. But it's like <laughs> that. It's it's reality, and that's how it went. Yeah. Well, do you have a favorite song off the Death of Darkness? That is that is actually really clever. You're you should be a detective or something like that. You really open up that those like sticky pages and found like hold on here's some writing as well <laughs> well right. to be fair i love that song stop like, going to my diary please <laughs> i guess maybe some of diane warren lives within me and i just don't know it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but did you have a favorite song off the album um mm, well i i like the title track like you said it's it's nice to play live because it's sort of like a, it kind of time machine. When we play it, I, I don't. It, it definitely I lose the track of time or or where are we and when. And I'm looking at the audience. I, it sort of takes them to the some some kind of uh, you know mind warp as well to the to some you know like some zone where there's no there's no time present. So it's 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 interesting song to play alive. Uh, mm-hmm. and so that that is definitely my favorite and I think it's it's the be- best track on the album as well 
for sure. I do have to say the 69 eyes sound even better live than on the album. So it's oh, yeah. in the scene. Yeah, I think we're yeah, I think we're a live band. And like like uh, that's that's the aim. I mean, once in a while, uh you need to release records to to get some press and then to remind remind you of your existence and then the then the do the the tours but we're a live band we have like our our we have a couple of new songs from the uh, last album on our set but the ma majority of our set will be like the best off of course from uh, from those records that people know most as of so you know uh live is live is a format and live is a uh, like something that i value also because i i mean uh, it's it's a it's a moment that we share with the audience and it's a unique moment and it never returns again. So it's mm -hmm. like a experience between us and the audience and uh, to share this moment of our lives way or another. And we also, I hope we bring some, some, you know, some wipe for the audience that they can forget whatever they have been, have been bothering them in their lives at that moment when they, they come to see the six on ice and a little bit, let them lose. For sure. And is that what you think? Um, like, is that what you look forward to the most when you do tours? Just that special bond that you have with the audience? Because every show is different. It, it's always so great to go. Like, I, I've started to enjoy playing live so much recently. Uh, and uh, obviously, it's a, it's a, as it's show business and there's no business like show business, you have it's <laughs> uh, there's there's always this uncertainty moments and and things wh wh whether your voice is all right or something might go wrong or but it's also like playing live it's like our band uh you know like it's a it's a real live show so it's ne never perfect and it's i think it's more interesting if i go to see a band if they break strings on from a guitar or <laughs> or something goes wrong it's it, it's you know you're you have to st stand in the audience you have to stand on your toes and you sort of keep the breath and hope that everything goes all right so that's like kind of dangerous cool rock and roll school rock and roll show so i hope that we can i, I think we can <laughs> definitely um you know deliver that for sure and like i said i've seen a lot of great feedback about tours like people love seeing you live what about um like the older music have you ever thought about adding that into the set list like songs like forevermore and sleeping with lions oh yeah I yeah well we have we, we're playing those songs actually once a while mm -hmm. and but it, it depends like uh in, in it depends where we play because we know that in certain certain let's say countries even people know certain songs and we can be sure that they know this and this record because you know like back in the day like our first american release like like can you believe that people don't even properly understand that but the, like uh records were not released all over the world when they came out mm -hmm. just like a couple of decades ago so our first american release is is the album called devils before that our music was not released in the states so we couldn't know when we came here if they know our well rest of the world understand thinking that they were our classic records but we couldn't tell if they know about them so sort of like uh it's still we we're not sure if people know this and this album and those songs that you mentioned were from the records where were which were not released in the states so uh it, it's been it's somehow you you never know you know like in the audience there might be a diehard fan who's been ordering records from Europe back back in the day or something obviously now streaming like streaming has changed everything but how could you tell I don't know mm -hmm. so I think we'll have a little bit like safe set for the US just to make mm -hmm. sure that people I mean it's 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 um it's 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 a six and a nice show but it's also like weird to play like, hey, they probably will love this. And then everybody's looking at, at on stage, like, on as a, they look like question marks, like, what the fucking song <laughs> is this? And we're like, hey, seems like they didn't know this one. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so you want to you wanna just make sure that everybody digs the stuff. Of course, it's always like a, what, later on, they can check them, check the song out. Maybe, it, you know, stands out like, oh, wow, I didn't know that song, but sounds great. So now I discovered what it is. 
But I mean, it's on the on the other hand, it's just like a, a kind of we're introducing the new album with a, with a bunch of songs, and then there's uh, like the rest of the show is like a, like sort of best of. So it's a little bit like a, a limited time frame to represent whole back catalog because we have such a many records and songs and what people most likely want to hear. For sure. Um, so I also saw in a video that there's also like new venues that you'll be playing, at least the one in Knoxville as well. How do you feel about playing at new venues? Uh, it's, it's exciting to go to new towns and uh, there's familiar places, which is always great to return. Uh, and and it, it's, it's weird that uh, we're all the way from uh, Nordic country, Finland, from from no northern part of Europe, and then we have like a family or regular venues in the states. So it's also like a little bit. I mean, it's like a, like like it's 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 kind of cool, super cool that we can consider some venues here in the U.S. as like a regular joints where we play. Also, like it's great to return to to play. Uh, in Manhattan, we play at the Gramercy Theater in New York. So that's 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 something we played like something like uh, could would say fifteen years ago or something. So that's that's also fantastic. Yeah. Do you ever get worried about new venues or anything like that, or are you excited? I'm oh, just, just excited. I'm excited, and and we we have never played in like for instance on this tour. We we started from Albany. And then we go to Buffalo. I've seen them just from from a from a tour bus, so I'm excited to, you know, explore those towns as well before the show. For sure, they're definitely fun. And then, then there's there's Knoxville and Mechanicsburg, as what I remember we never been. So that's exciting. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, as being living in Knoxville, I can tell you it's definitely grown ah. in decades. So <laughs> cool. So, so well, finally, we come over. Thank you, Alex, for <laughs> inviting us. Thank you for inviting Helsinki Vampires. Well, I'm glad I thought it in my mind and you read my mind. So we must be linked through our minds. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> so I know the 69 Eyes tours a lot. What kind of keeps you guys, like, what's the motivation to keep going? Like, how do you recharge after so many shows? Well, actually, we, we love to go on stage and Sort of like over these years, a lot of things have fallen into pieces. I mean, uh, it was it was like crazy partying uh, two decades ago. Then it was just like uh, semi crazy partying, and now it now it's just like a uh, it's not that crazy, but it's still partying. So you know, like uh, it's, it's so, so, such a enjoy to be on stage and rock out. It's yeah. it's you you can see it from all of us. It's it's not like it's uh it's 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 sometimes I I look at the other guys from a corner of my eye and I'm and, and they are they are playing like it's the last day of their lives, and that's actually <laughs> something which is very enjoyable to do to to you know to you put your best effort on the show and that's that that is what we enjoy and I enjoy the most. Right. Well, we love seeing you and hearing you, so we're we're happy about that. And yeah, that's I, fantastic. And 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 now now, as you pointed out, I can't wait for the Knoxville show. Yeah, <laughs> I do have one last question here for you. I know this yes, has built a dedicated following over the years, but what message would you like to give your fans as you release this new single and as you're about to start your tour? Well, I'm first of all, I'm, I'm I'm glad that there's a, you know, followers and fans, and people who care about rock and roll and go to see live bands. And thanks for sticking this long with the Sixty Nine Eyes. If you ever, if if you have never heard of us, but you want to see some high energy rock and roll dark rock show, please be welcome. And and I also want to remind that there's a fantastic two bands with us. Uh, really friends of ours from Hollywood, Butterside and incredible high energy band, The Bites as well. So it's it's a it's an amazing package. It's really a rock and roll package that you're gonna get when you come to see this tour and meet us in Knoxville. For sure. Well thank you so much for taking the time to Absolutely. do Absolutely. 
and can't wait to see you live in Knoxville and Nashville and Mechanicsburg everywhere you're coming. So thank you again for, for taking Thank us. you, Alex. Thank you. Two horn, two horns up. We'll Long see live the health next week. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank All you. Right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.